So for those who don't know Pratham Books, uh, we're a not-for-profit children's book publisher. We are very, very passionate about two things, uh, children's books and Indic languages. And I'm going to quickly throw some stats. Uh, 200 million children in India, not enough books in not enough languages. For 11 years, we've been publishing children's books, uh, beautiful uh, books with beautiful illustrations by lovely authors. Uh, yet we've only been able to do 14 million uh, books till date. Uh, which is a lot of gap to 200 million children. Uh, last six, seven years, we've been uh, actively open licensing our content. And today I'm um, here to talk about Story Weaver, which we launched on 8th September, two days back on International Literacy Day, with 800 stories in 26 languages. I'll move to So we think Story Weaver is India's first open source platform for uh, multilingual children's books. Uh, here are the things that you can do on the platform. You can read all the stories that we have uh, worked very hard to digitize, uh, re-integrate, uh, and bring onto the platform. Uh, you can also translate stories, because we don't believe with the small team that we have, we can do all the translations of all the children of the world. So we really uh, want... Um, you know, the community to come forward onto the platform and do their own translations of the children's stories that they love. And uh, <clears throat> also create books from the images that we've uploaded. And all of this is under a CCBY 4.0 license. So as I said, 800 stories migrated onto the platform across 26 languages, 14 Indian and 12 international. Uh, this is how the platform looks. The net here is not great, so I, I'm doing a screenshot demo, which is not ideal, but Story Weaver is live, so you guys can, and mobile friendly, so you guys can browse while I talk as well. Um, this is how the homepage looks like, and uh, you can filter through languages, you can filter through reading levels, you can filter through categories, and get to the choice of your book. Um, one of the really important things, and I think it's been a trend throughout the day from whatever uh, sessions that I have attended, is this fact of um, you know my publishers to migrate onto Unicode compliant formats. And uh, we had two choices and we started working on this platform. Is one to do what we were doing for the last seven, eight years, is do a PDF and put it up. Fastest we would have the platform out six months back actually. But we said no, we'll kind of do it right this time. And we took the pains to take all these books and to uh, convert every single word on the platform in every language that we have into Unicode, which means that, like, I've typed the word Dadi here. If you type Dadi, if you have an Indic language keyboard onto your laptop, you type Dadi, it'll actually give you all the books that have the word Dadi starting from the title until synopsis and then into the book as well. Um, if you choose a book, uh, this is how the book uh, looks like on the platform. We have horizontal and vertical uh, formats. Just a step back, what we have done is the actual physical print book may not really look like this. It may have text over image. It may have many other things. But for the digital medium, we've actually redesigned all our books into templates for the platform so that it's you know accessible across devices. Also, we have a larger strategy where we want partners to come and easily take our content. Uh, what we learned right from the ground in the last few years is that partners were taking our content and spending a lot of time rejigging that content to, to make uh, use for themselves. For example, Bookshare, who works with the visually impaired. They actually have to stop focusing on creating books for visually impaired, take our content, make it Unicode compliant, convert the formats, and then make use of it. We really hope that by actually taking the time out to make all these changes into the platform. We've enabled our partners to create their production process times and actually focus on their individual missions as well. Um, if you go into the story details page, uh, it gives you other versions of the story. So every story in every language that it's available is available for educators and resource uh, people. Uh, you can download any story for free. So a high, uh, we used to get many requests. We love your open license books. Can we get high resolution artwork? Can we get high resolution print ready PDFs? Can we get this? So we said, no, don't call us now. Just get on to Story Weaver. There's a high resolution PDF download. There is an off online low res uh, download. And there is an EPUB format for all those people who need to co-create content, uh, take content off the platform and do uh, further versions of it. Um, I'll quickly show you how the translate functionality works on the platform. So uh, say I like the story Singing in the Rain, and I see that it doesn't have a Hindi translation. There is a Hindi translate icon onto the platform. I just click on that, and it opens what we call the reader. 
it gives you the translation uh, because you're choosing to translate from english into hindi it gives you the english reference text on the top so that the translator knows what he or she needs to translate to and then um, we've also got a transliteration tool on the platform for about 11 languages indian languages in fact uh, we have one for odia which even google doesn't have because we publish in odia so um, if i put badal then it's actually given me um, options for the word badal in hindi and i can choose one click enter and start creating my story it's not very robust clearly because there aren't many users but as we get there we hope that the tool becomes more and more robust and gives accurate uh, translations uh this is a feedback that we got when we did a lot of research with uh, librarians and one of the things that they kept telling us that sometimes they love our stories but um, you know they're probably at a higher level than the children that they work with so uh, th the way the translate function works just like that there is a relevel icon uh, on the book you can just click relevel and again the whole story will appear and the librarian can change the text and relevel it to suit the children that she's working with um we've also uploaded 2000 really beautiful images on the platform and we hope that quickly all of you all will get onto the platform and start creating a story because there is a storyteller in every one of us um so you can you know browse for uh, uh, images via category via um, style and um, it works very much like the translator tool where you you know take an image put it onto the screen and just type typing uh on the right side there are templates so you can change templates if you have a slightly textier book you don't want more image you can take a, a different um, template uh, here i've changed the template you can see here it's a horizontal template image horizontal here it's uh, image vertical uh i can also uh, open the left uh, image drawer and pull out image and start browsing images or change image and then put the image again and start creating my story so that's what uh, we've been working on at pratham books and really this is uh, i think where we are going and this is our, our new social publishing model where we believe see we don't believe that print will go out we definitely don't want print to go out so what we've done is we are actually redesigning our workflows uh, to to merge up to a certain point and then have two different workflows where print uh, will continue doing the beautiful uh, books that children need and for places where print uh, you know satya talked about distribution right clearly this idea has come out because we are not able to reach enough children distribution is a big pain point for us so we are hoping that we can create access for where we haven't been able to and where there is access there's no harm in reading one extra book on a device absolutely not so uh, you know really want to collaborate with people in languages and then of course layered with the ccby license we hope that we get many many children to read log on to storyweaver.org.in thank you purvi and thank you especially for sticking within the 10 minute time and i didn't have to tell you to stop i'd like to invite shailesh from read my story to present so we've been around for about a year and a half now last year when we were here in fact uh, we met with pratham and they were pretty generous in sharing about 80 books with us so i'll talk about that uh, later on but essentially what problem we are trying to solve is uh, well this this was more of a quote and what we are trying to solve is a uh, lot of people write books however um, they don't get data uh, unless i share it with my friends and family uh but can i get data from outside my ecosystem to make sure that i can take a more constructive decision whether i should really publish the book and if yes which publisher should i take it and take it further so we essentially provide data uh which is related to demographics um of the readers uh another question which we are solving a problem for the publisher is if my book is published right now i'm blindly spending my money or uh, marketing Uh, rupees across different mediums but if i concentrate on a particular geography because i have that data by uh, putting a book on our platform that will be more interesting for them so that they get more returns out of whatever they're trying to spend um outside my so i think a third 
third part I covered, and a lot of people, uh, publishers especially, and some authors as well, would have written a lot of books, but uh, they may not have, you know, financially made uh, it profitable. Uh, so can I rejuvenate such books to make sure that I can earn more out of it? So those are some of the uh, problems which we are solving by uh, creating a marketing platform. Um, it's a service dedicated to promote authors and publishers, and I'll give you some examples of how does it benefit for an author, for a publisher, as well as for a reader, because these three entities have to be important. Uh, so we actually have our own mobile app uh, on which we are currently have about 80 odd books. Uh, almost all of, not almost all of them currently are in English. Uh, very soon we're going to launch multilingual uh, and a search functionality also so that they can actually search based on either a genre they are trying to uh, read through or a particular language or segment which they are more keen on. Uh, quick, uh, how, it, how it works. Um, so we essentially have a, um, a both readers as well as publishers or authors have to sign up on the platform. Authors and publisher can just go ahead and place the book. Reader, reader can uh, download it for free. Uh, over a period of time, we plan to have a, a subscription-based model. That's where our revenue is going to come from. Uh, that's the model which we currently have. And uh, yes, the entire book for now. Uh, there are certain uh, variations which we are working on, and and I'll talk about that as well. So, what's a solution for the publisher? Um, you know, any new author, how do you take popularity? And then there are various methods. Obviously, you guys are more tuned on how do you make a pop, uh, author popular and try marketing activities and so on and so forth. Uh, but the idea is that uh, it does is it backed by a pop, you know data, hard data? Because currently, if you walk in you know crossword. Uh, they're not going to share that data. Amazon or Flipkart's, again, I don't think they sh shared data till about six months ago unless they've changed their uh, approach now. So where do you get that data? On your website, you're basically limiting because that's your ecosystem, but how do you go outside your ecosystem is something which we are solving that problem of. So I'll quickly talk about Pratham. Um, we actually have about 100 readers uh, so the distribution problem somebody was trying to address, we are, we are solving that problem today. Uh, there are about 100 uh, readers per month uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we have about uh, 1,200 people who subscribe, and there are books added on a regular basis from Pratham and other publishers as well. So today we currently have about 80 in total, uh, out of which 40 are from Pratham, and the other biling uh, multilingual apps, uh, sorry, books will be added pretty soon. Um, authors, uh, whether they want to be self-published authors or they want to essentially uh, go with a particular uh, publisher, there is always a challenge of, uh, you know, is my book good? My friends say, talk about that very good, but I'm not sure whether a you know, wider audience would be able to bring that uh, justice to my book. So we are a platform which is independent. You put the entire book or part of the book and make sure that you garner gen, uh, generate interest about three to four months. It takes about that that kind of a time, unless it's a very scientific book and uh, um, which may take about six months to garner interest. But generally, three to four months, you get that in, uh, data, and it it would tell you what uh, specific. So uh, there is an interesting data which we have is the author thought uh, her book essentially would be more focused around. Uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat area, uh, and then while she looked at the demographic, apparently a lot of people in South were reading. So the majority of readers were actually from South, then in from Maharashtra and Gujarat. So that was an eye opener for her. So then she fine tuned that book and went to a publisher, which eventually got published. Oh yeah, one important point is uh, so far we have not, not seen any. Uh, any anybody hacking into our system? I mean, people have tried, but they have not been successful so far. But I'm not saying that we are 100% uh, hack-free model because if somebody really wants to do it, they can actually do it. Um, one example um, 
which is Gauri's book. Um, it was already published, and she said, "I'm not. I don't think my publisher is doing enough justice to this. Can you guys actually market for me for at least a month or so?" Uh, we said, "Sure." So we actually placed that uh, fine-tuned the way advertising needs to be done on social media and a bunch of other uh, media which we actually work on, and we actually got her that kind of a data within two weeks. Uh, and she took that data, went to her publisher, and said, "See, this is what uh, this is kind of digital marketing you guys need to do." I don't know what happened after that, but that's something I, I'll leave that with Gauri and her publisher. Uh, benefits to reader: uh, they get to read latest books from uh, different authors, which they they need not spend a lot of time and. They don't have to buy books because most of these books, not most, all of them, except the teaser books are free, so they can actually get it and share their feedback. The only thing which we are looking for from them is actually take, giving us feedback. If they don't, we still have ways and means of capturing that data and share that uh, an analytics data with the author. Uh, but ideally, if, you, if we get... Uh, on Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus, that's something which would be critical. Um, there are certain things which we are working on to reach out to a wider audience because everybody has this question: so how how much scalable is this? Uh, today we are about 15 to 18 downloads, uh, new downloads per week. But again, that's not a good model because that will just scale up to, say, 2,000 by end of this year, but nothing beyond that. So we're trying to partner with, um, you know, cell cons of the world who would essentially, if we have pre-built, uh, our app pre-built into the cell phone, whenever somebody activates internet and they download the first book, that will be treated as a download. So that's the kind of scale, uh, sorry, scaling model which we are looking at. Um, some publishers, especially the big ones, uh, initially saw us a threat uh, to their digital marketing. And then we realized that uh, if we have to coexist, uh, co then probably white labeling would be a good idea. So that's something which we are also considering. Audiobooks, uh, I think I would not talk because a lo lot of people have already talked white about labeling? that. White labeling? Um, so our platform can be used as their platform uh, under their umbrella not under the bigger umbrella, which is there. There are some drawbacks, but some people want to use that, so be it. Um, that's it. Thank you. This mic is getting taller and going away. Okay. I'd like to invite Sridhar from Akriti Technologies. Technologies, right? Akriti. Ah, you'll introduce that, no? <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> yeah, my gun needs <laughs> Okay, good evening, everybody. So the topic is uh, making publications in Indian languages ready for all devices. <coughs> now, this is something we have been discussing over years. The whole idea is, uh, like as the panelists have told in many sessions, the world is swinging towards mobile devices and uh, digital. So that is one thing where we need. Second thing is, there are more people on the internet today than before. And uh, rising youth population of India, so that was again discussed. And we have things like uh, smart cities and uh, digital India dream by the government also. All these things point to a fact that there are a lot of people who are going to use the digital platform and they don't have content. And that is one of the, again, the debates uh, what took place now, that what are we doing for the content? So what, you need, what we need to address is that uh, we need to look at other media apart from print. That is one thing. The other digital devices to be included in the thought process. Traditionally, publishers are thinking only with paper and printing in mind. So they need to think from a different perspective that uh, their content will be consumed in other devices as well. And books can include 
things like multimedia and uh, video and audio i mean as we have been discussing now all these things are generic and what is so specific about it is something which i'll come to so if you have seen i mean language publishing has been very different from english publishing in this country when it comes to an english publication it is very easy to convert your print book into an ebook or a ebook into a web page or anything like that with ready made tools or mostly available tools in the open source platform but when you get to indian language content it's very difficult you can't do it and people who have done it will really watch for it it's extremely <laughs> difficult to convert from your print publication to an electronic or digital publication now why is that i mean we need to look at why this particular thing is the print media has lived in a different world where the fonts were proprietary fonts and they were used to make the page and print from various software like page maker and corel draw and all the other things and you can say about 30 years of dtp work has been done so whole lot of typing has gone whole lot of page layout has happened whole lot of settings have been done and operators are used to something with all that thing everything has happened in a custom font so that means it is not a standard font it is a customized thing by somebody like i have been one of the guys so whole lot of people have done this kind of work when today we are talking about standards digitally everything is standardized and unicode is a consortium to put the standards and push the standards so they have laid out a thing for hindi and other indian languages as well so if you are on unicode text you can be on a global platform and various tools and technology available to the international community will work for you if you are on a proprietary font nothing will work on that so what people tried was that okay let me do in unicode the issue is i mean uh, the like okay i'll tell you something about this fonts are required to communicate your emotions also along with a book i mean definitely a book which is meant for light reading cannot look the same way as a book which has been published for a serious thought provoking article they are very different and the print existing print publishing fonts cannot be used in the digital media as it is so the next alternative is can it be working with a unicode font which is meant for the device so the fonts which are meant for the device are not aesthetically pleasing so definitely if you try to look at your book in three different devices it will look three different ways your book doesn't remain same it doesn't feel same so naturally you lose all the advantage of a proper look for your book so our recommendation is that you need to shift your print publication and as well as your digital publication to unicode to bring a platform for you with standards to go forward now there have been some approach which have been taken like uh, you publish your digital publishing uh, content in the same font as the print media it worked the mix it's a, there is a mix of that somewhere it will work but somewhere it won't work so ultimately you will end up redoing it at a later stage which will affect you it will uh, which will affect you in a longer run so think about it in a way where you can go with a longer distance so what do we do there so the idea is you evolve it as a process understand that there are complexities involved it's not an overnight job make a road map for it especially if you have 100 book 200 books as content plan this out and then you work towards it so that you can complete it on a specific schedule but one thing let me tell you 
with all these discussions happening about various things it is all the more essential that whatever content you possess as a publisher you have the content with you in the digital format so don't leave it to the platforms platforms are there i mean i am also having a platform but the idea is you still have the content with you you can give your ebook to amazon you give your ebook to i i itunes but have the epub with you have the digital content with you so that you have the ability to modify change and do anything in future not depending on anybody else so the idea is look at the entire solution take a project to repurpose your uh, content to the digital devices and uh, sufficient time to convert yourself then here conversion of your book to epub and movie files see if pdf will not work for you because the aspect ratio is different and you can even see if you can introduce some new elements when you are redesigning for digital you can introduce audio and video and all that putting out the stores and attaching you can attach this to your existing e-commerce solution for your printed books and you can send the content to the user and putting it on as many digital platforms as you can so this is something which you can look at i mean you need not restrict your digital thing to only one store you never restricted your print publication to one store so why are you restricting your digital content to one store so you can look at it in a different way to take advantage of people you can sell your product so this is the execution plan you can discuss the requirements you can uh, see what formats you want and uh, put the stores and see the mechanism check it out and you have a drm also you can look at okay the last minute <laughs> the idea is you can start in a small way and then grow when you have multiple number of books the really large number of books don't think at that, that because once you multiply it by 1000 2000 you will get a mind boggling figure don't go with that do two books see this entire life cycle and then go with it and thank you so much for giving me time and it's my pleasure interacting with you and uh, the experience here has been wonderful Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you Sujay. Our final presentation for today is by Pitash of Themeify and he has already Yeah. Please come. Yeah. Hello everybody. Um I know I'm in the not very pleasant position of concluding uh, so i'll try to finish in 5 hopefully so um i started themeify with this uh, thought that uh, since as a child i used to look at a book as a pyramid so at the top of the pyramid is the book itself and at the bottom is all the research and all the uh, thoughts and images that an author has collected why at the, when he goes to the process of book so that started me into thinking how we can create a way to capture all of the information that the authors anyways uh, you know using and and that led to building themeify and what we have come to is is now building a platform that allows people to capture their experiences mix and match them with existing content and publish something on the web um eventually we've now realized that as as the future hold uh, holds a lot of peer to peer publishing uh, we we started opening it up to people giving their experiences and bring them into our platform and then we having the underlying layer that uh, combines them or stitches them together and and builds out a digital publication so how do we do that uh, how do we 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 allow people to bring in audio video images uh captured through any devices either a mobile we have a mobile app and also on the web uh sent to our platform which has algorithms uh, so if you send us a web page we extract uh, meaningful content from them we ex uh, from that we extract the image representative uh, from that and then we allow allow that to be turned into a, a sort of a flippable uh, or a flip book 
And uh, one of the things that we've realized is that a lot of uh, people want to don't want to spend a lot of time creating these publications because it's about capturing something and communicating that in a very short span of time. So we are trying to do all the heavy lifting for the user um, uh, using our platform. So uh, just to do a very quick deep dive into what we've built. Uh, so we've built a search backbone that plugs into a whole bunch of different APIs. So when you come to Themify, you type a topic, we parallelly search across YouTube, Google, Wikipedia, uh, Flickr, and bring out visually a lot of results. And we have an interface that allows you to then choose what you want out of those results, filter between only images, only videos, and, and then uh, send this to our uh, publishing engine. The publishing engine at that point automatically picks up uh, the content that it thinks is meaningful, but it also allows you to override that and make uh, some changes to it either in, in actual content or in the font and images. And alongside that, we've also started building a bit of a collaboration engine. So because we realized that as people were publishing content and publishing their experiences, they wanted to interact with others in a closed group format. So we've built this whole set of things as individual components. And one of the things that we are able to do is mix and match them depending on uh, what a user needs at that point. Um, so uh, just a brief look at what we plug into, that's, that's, our, that's our approach. So what we've taken as an approach is that uh, the platform plugs into all of these and we also have an app that allows you to capture your own uh, information. But if tomorrow, if somebody wants to plug in something else here, for instance, if uh, uh, Pratham, uh, we want to plug in the Pratham APIs, uh, we can do that as well. So that allows for a very unique way of mapping information in the real world to our experiences and then bringing them together. So these experiences and this information on our platform gets uh, uh, built into what we call either themes or cards and portfolios. So I'm not going to go into each of these right now, but if you go to themify.com, uh, it allows you to kind of build these kind of uh, end products or digital, digital publications. So um, I, I touched upon this, that we intelligently identify the meaningful content and our API-driven approach allows you to kind of take the same content and re render it into different formats. Uh, the output formats are designed inherently to uh, be responsive. So if you build something, for, uh, you don't have to worry about whether it, how it will look on a mobile platform or how it will look on a l larger screen. The, the browser takes care of that. So... This is an exam a screenshot of a theme curated by a user. And, and by its definition, this is essentially a momentary content. It's experiential rather than being something very in-depth. I mean, nothing prevents a user from creating in-depth content. But this, for instance, I specifically chose because somebody created something about what if I were. And this is a very beautiful mix of audio, video images. Uh, this is a card. So this is another format. Um, that you can publish on Themify, and it's it's in the form of uh, cards instead of a flip book sort of thing. And this is a digital portfolio. So these are the three ways in which uh, right now on Themify you can take content from the web and your own content and represent it. Um, we eventually want to get to a stage where people can uh, monetize these bite-sized content. So we will hit scale not by, uh, you know, pro providing a way of, uh, uh, you know, licensing or anything, but by individual monetization mechanism. We haven't gotten there yet because we are very early stage, but that's the that's the plan for the future. Um, so. Uh, there are many ways in which we could use this platform. Right now, we are being, uh, we are using, we are very focused on teaching and learning. We are in schools in the U.S., in in the West, and even in India. But the same platform can be used for show, showcasing experiences, for publishing business documentation, uh, transmedia journalism, and there are there are examples where that has happened using our platform. So. Uh, once again, this is this is uh, this is our first hero product. We we call it the flagship product. It's a theme, and uh, it's been successfully used as of now by over thirty thousand users on Themeify to teach into in classrooms. So typically, we see a teacher coming onto the platform using our platform to collect a lot of information and creating these sort of uh, things that then they send out to students, and then students use it to. Uh, uh, you know, understand the content or re respond by creating similar themes from, from their own learning. 
Um, and the other part of this is that every aspect of these themes are, is customizable. So uh, you could change the way the cover image looks, you could change the way the font looks, the content, everything you can choose. Um, uh, so, so this is education publishing focused for everyone everywhere. And, and I'm not going to delve into that uh, because of the lack of time, but because of the way this works, it inherently means that people can uh, you know, create something one time and then it can be reused across the network by various people. Um, so, so we firmly believe that, that content is going to be there. So earlier I did mention that text is going out, but what I meant is that long form text is probably going to have a life cycle, but bite-sized learning in the form of content, video and images is always going to be there. And what we're trying to achieve with our platform is to have a way in which you can uh, seamlessly mer merge that with your own content and create beautiful publications. Uh, we, are, we, are want, we want to partner with other people, learn from other people's experiences. That's why I am here, just to learn and observe, because we have done this for the education industry now, and there's a solution out there, and I want to replicate that for other uh, niche businesses as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ditesh. Uh, before we break, I'd just like to say two things. One is that we are soon going to have dinner shortly. And at dinner today, uh, the drinks are sponsored by Book Machine. And what Book Machine is, is something I want him to quickly tell us. I am on Book Machine. Okay, thanks. So um, I'll take 30 seconds. Book Machine is a really uh, nice platform for you to sign up and showcase your skills as a uh, author, editor, designer, and is also a way where publishers can find you. So this is, it's really popular in the, in Europe right now, not very active in India. I am not one of the core founders, Gavin and Laura Summers, who are based out of UK, run the, run the publishing uh, thing. I am, I'm just the person who wrote the code behind that, but you can check out bookmachine.co or bookmachine.org. And I think that it is pretty self-explanatory. So thanks. Thank you. But what Book Machine is, is that it is a networking platform for professionals in the publishing industry to come and showcase their skill sets, whether editorial design or production related. So it helps people to find pro publishing professionals, and that's what Book Machine is trying to do. They also do events. I know I'm doing your job. You. They also do events across the UK, which are very interesting conferences and just meetups and things like that. So if it ever came to India, I think it would be a big success or something that's it's like that. Uh, it's, it's, no, it's, uh, it's not the, the uh, networking doesn't, the events don't happen here. Yeah, yeah. But networking component seems to be a big success no, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. uh, just one last thing. So Book Machine actually happened, bookmachine.co happened because I met Gavin and Laura at Publishing Next, the yeah, first the first publishing. So that's one of the... <laughs> direct I'm not anti-book. <laughs> 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 <laughs>